Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I titled this message on blaming God's people. God doesn't want to hear it. On blaming God's people. God doesn't want to hear it. We have individuals that will attend various events where Christians are present and the spirit will move sometimes stepping on people's toes with the truth whether you are a believer or you're not a believer if you come into a setting where there is some truth being spoken sooner or later you will be offended by the truth when you are not ready to do what is right when you have trouble listening to the Lord when you don't like what you're reading in the Bible when you have issue with people who attend church when you don't like those Christians when you are so focused on looking at everyone but yourself you will have problems walk in this walk you will have issue go into the church you will have those uh, challenges that will arise when dealing with the people of God I have heard many times people visit churches and not want to return because they don't like what is being said I've heard people say that's why I don't go to church because of those people and can I tell you that God is not listening to the excuses a personal relationship with Christ is just that it's a personal relationship and my relationship with him has nothing to do with what this one in the church is wearing what this one in the church is saying what this one is doing and all of that I am supposed to be focused on the Word of God I'm supposed to be trusting in God someone didn't get the memo Someone needed to be reminded. Someone needs to stop blaming church people for all that is wrong with the church. Sure, we have to hold some folks accountable. But God is not interested in you venting and ranting and tripping out and blaming church people for everything that is wrong with your spiritual walk or with those that are around you we like to sit back when we don't want to do something or we don't like to listen to the prophets or evangelists or deacons or what have you we like to come up with all sorts of excuses well the reason why I don't like this one and that one is because of what she said or what he did and the Lord is looking at us from on high and saying my child my child I want you to follow me I want you to trust in me I want you to listen to the truth even when it hurts I want you to confess sin and repent doesn't it always come back to that confess your sin and repent quit the blaming quit the shaming Quit trying to uh, guilt trip folk. Quit trying to talk about this thing and that thing and why you don't want to do what's right. Just confess the sin and repent. The minute we hear someone talking about what they don't like about the church, that and the other, let's start talking about the sin. Oh, that's going to really make some upset. But are we really so passive, so weak? so concerned about offending someone that they never get saved maybe that's why some folks never do get saved because well you know why should I why should I even bother I mean the church is a party right it's fun it's a social club hey the minister he's doing his thing the deacon's doing his right 
we live in this politically correct society that is slowly but surely changing so all of that pc business is going to be going out the door and we are coming right back around to stepping on some toes again with truth and we are coming right back around with seeing people for who they truly are because they're not going to keep suppressing and oppressing and everything else they're going to go ahead and say listen this is what i am and if you don't like it oh well and this is how i feel and if you don't like that well oh well we're seeing that happening in mass media more and more people showing the good bad and ugly about themselves and they're not saying it in the most sweetest nicest and wonderful ways so if you are going to go to a church or some type of event where Christians are present and the light is shining all around, what I mean by that is truth is coming out in so many different ways. You might as well just stand tall and realize that whatever you're doing, whether behind closed doors or out in the open it's going to be talked about and we can come on with every excuse going and try to defend or offend the person telling us what's what and at the end of the day God is still going to tell us about our ugly ways God is still going to use us to tell others about things that they rather not hear and there's going to be those that's going to say, well, you're out of order. And there's those that's going to say, well, that's not the way we do things. And there are those that's going to say, well, aren't you going to give somebody a chance to walk down the aisle and get saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled before you tell them about this, that, and the other? We don't know how God is going to move. I will tell you, there's been times where I have spoken truth to folks and they didn't like it and they came up with excuses and they didn't come back to the church setting or they didn't come back to talk to me. And do you think that I'm going to lose sleep over that? Do you think that I'm going to stop speaking the kind of truth that's going to convict folks? Do you think that I'm going to risk my anointing? Just because somebody said that I'm supposed to make sure that folks are saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled before I speak certain things? I don't think so. Because, you see, we've got to meet the people where they are. And it's not just about their needs and their wants and their desires and can you pray for me. We've got to be able to speak truth and say, listen, right now, your money shouldn't be going out there paying for all these sinners and a sinful lifestyle and everything else. If you want at least a little blessing coming your way prior to wanting to do this that and the other for God at least put your money where your mouth is and that's into the things of the Lord into those blessings that you claim you want that's where it needs to be and if you want to talk about how you love this one and that one well first up before you talk about how you love this one and that one can you check yourself and see that you truly love yourself first and foremost and then is it true that you have problems with uh, wanting to uh, have a relationship with Christ? And if that's the case, then maybe there's some things in your lifestyle that you need to deal with before you go saying that, oh, well, I really want to join the church. I really want to, you know, get saved. I really want to do this, that, and the other. I mean, some folks are not going to always go in the order that we think that they need to go in. And some folks are not going to always walk down the aisle when we want them to. And some folks are not going to, come on, come to the church just because you know and we like to come up with all sorts of reasons as to why they need to come to the church how about the saints are not going to be in the church but that they're going to be outside of the church and that they're going to have their services outside of the church i'm waiting for the churches that's going to start putting some of the um, services outside of the church while the people are walking by while the people are driving by why is it that everything's got to be behind the closed doors where there's no windows they can't even walk by and see what's going on i know that i've peeked in the church i didn't see 
any windows around the church but when I did see a, a little small window through a door I peeked in to see what was going on at least I had that much <laughs> and then I'll tell you that if we can at least see a little bit of what's going on then what happens is is that we come on inside don't we at some point and we check out what's taking place now sometimes we're going to get the welcome hello how you doing and sometimes no one's going to say too much of anything because God has set it up that way and uh, in other times it's nothing more than the devil and that person that's walking in they don't know exactly what's taking place but what they do know is truth and truth will convict and we've got to stop holding people and telling them that it's okay and it's all right all the time because there's going to come a point where God's going to say you can stop telling her all these things just because you want her to keep coming to the church and you can stop telling him all these nice little cutesy little things just because you want him to keep coming to the church no God is saying for some folks you better stop you better stop rubbing them on the back and saying that it's okay I'm ready to do some things I'm ready to convict them I'm ready to see those tears fall I'm ready for them to stop blaming church folk about everything so get out the way and let me go head on and move upon this person's spirit and I will tell you that there's times where people are going to fall out even if it's not the type of church that believes in falling out and there's going to be some times where people are going to spin around and they're going to shout even if the church isn't all into the whole shouting and there's going to be times where people are going to be convicted in such a way where even the minister himself is going to have to sit down for a while and there will be those times where all that blaming Blaming the church for this and blaming the church for that. God's going to say, keep your mouth shut. I've heard you say that for days, for weeks, for months, for years. You're going to stop blaming church folk, church business, church this and church that for why you don't want to keep coming to church. You're going to stop that. And those that finally wake up and stop saying, well, you know, she's doing that because or he's doing that because they're going to stop. Uh, eventually get tired of it too and say listen I heard you and I know that you don't like this that and the other but that should not be a reason as to why you're not going to the church so let us take the moment right now to pray for ourselves as well as loved ones who have gotten to a place where they, that's all they do anymore is blame everybody for everything I pray in Jesus name Lord that you will convict those in such a way where they will stop blaming I pray in Jesus name that all of the offenses that they have received over the years whether from church folk or not that they will recognize that you are at work and that you are in control of all and that you Lord Jesus and Mishanda Babuoshinges will just speak into their hearts and remind them of how much you love them. You love them so much that you're speaking truth to them in all sorts of ways, and that they will feel that as a result of that truth being spoken, that they will draw near to you, and that in the process, that they will also draw near to men and women of faith, and that they will stop blaming and stop shaming and stop guilt tripping so that they can have excuses to sin. I pray, Lord Jesus, to turn every situation around, Lord Jesus, and that we will get to a place where there is no more talking about why things are the way they are and just start working and getting things done now that the reasons and the causes and all of that are out there and that the truth will set folks free. I pray these things in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Please do check the description box for anything related to your situation. And to God be the glory.